Dear friends, it's Father Nailihi here. I want to speak to you today about the moral issues which are surrounding the COVID vaccines which are now becoming available. Uh, recently, the Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith released a statement saying that it was morally acceptable for Catholics to take this vaccine. Now, looking at some of the online reaction uh, from Catholics, uh, it's fair to say that there's been a fair amount of confusion and outright, I would say, criticism and negative reaction to this statement. Uh, I think partly uh, that, that has come from the fact that it hasn't been explained well, uh, perhaps deliberately from hasn't been explained well by the, the Catholic media, media outlets that have been covering it. So today I just want to explain uh, and sort of go through step by step why the why the Vatican the congregation Vatican's congregation for the doctrine of the faith has said that it is morally acceptable acceptable for Catholics to take the vaccine. First thing I want to say is that this is not a new teaching from the CDF. It is basically a restatement of uh, previous statements from 2000 and, 2005 and 2008 uh, under the papacy of Pope Benedict. Uh, and in the in in those t and at that time the the focus was on vaccines for rubella, which had been uh, developed uh, from cells uh, which were taken from aborted fetuses. So it's kind of the same moral issue, but just in uh, with a new situation. So just to say first of all that this statement is is a restatement really of a previous teaching uh, for, uh, for a new situation. So basic, I think the basic question which Catholics will be asking themselves at this time is if I take a vaccine, uh, the development of which involved the use of cell lines which were developed from an aborted fetus, if I take that vaccine, am I cooperating in that original act of, of the abortion? Uh, am I cooperating in some way in that evil act? And the answer to that question is yes, Yes, you are cooperating in that original act of abortion. Uh, that's not in dispute. Uh, however, that is not the only question that we ask as Catholics when we try to come to uh, an ethical decision, an ethical judgment uh, on an act. It's not simply whether we're cooperating or not, but in what way are we cooperating with that original act? And there are various forms of moral cooperation uh, with with evil acts, and they all carry different levels of of moral seriousness and culpability. And that, from what I've seen, a lot of uh, the the Catholic media uh, are not really helping Catholics to understand this. And this is extremely important. And 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 that's why the the, the Vatican statements have have been so detailed and 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 given us that ethical clarity. Um, so what are the different kinds of, of cooperation, uh, moral cooperation? Uh, so I, to, to help explain this, I'm going to take another example, uh, sort of an analogous situation. Uh, let's imagine that uh, a man goes into a bank and robs, robs it. And he runs out of the bank uh, carrying a big bag of cash. And, and you're there sitting in the car waiting for him to whisk him away. You're his getaway driver. In this instance, you uh, are cooperating with the, the act of evil. You're, you're not, you didn't rob the bank yourself, but you are cooperating with, with the man who did. And you're helping him get away. And if you intend to help him, as you do in this case, you are formally cooperating with him. So that's the technical ethical term we use for that. Uh, when you willingly help someone to co commit a crime or, or do something evil, uh, you are formally cooperating with that person. If, however, uh, you just happen to be sitting uh, in your car in front of the bank when he comes running out with his big bag of cash and he jumps into the car and points a gun at you and says, drive. In that situation, uh, if you feel you have no choice but to, to, to drive and to help him get away, uh, in that case, you're withholding your, uh, your consent from your, your moral consent from, uh, from helping him but you are still cooperating in a material way. And we call that material cooperation. When you don't uh, uh, have the intention uh, of, of supporting, of cooperating with this evil act, in this case, theft, uh, but nonetheless, you still find yourself uh, helping in a material way. 
This is called material cooperation. Uh, big difference between formal cooperation and material cooperation. Formal cooperation uh, is uh, morally illicit. Uh, it is wrong uh, to, to formally cooperate uh, with an evil act. Uh, uh, whereas material cooperation uh, sometimes can be morally acceptable and sometimes morally unacceptable. In, the, in both of these cases, uh, you can see, uh, you would also say that this is proximate uh, and that means that you're very close to the action. So in, in the first case, if you're willingly being the getaway driver, you're involved in, you're involved in proximate formal cooperation, uh, which, is, which is wrong uh, and morally unacceptable. In the second case, uh, you're engaging in prox proximate material cooperation, where, you, where you're not freely helping the person you don't share their intention of doing the evil act. And in this case, it would be uh, morally acceptable uh, to, to drive away. Uh, because if you weren't to drive, to drive away, then you would be risking your life. Uh, and, and preservation of life is an important moral uh, principle too. So there you go. That would be uh, proximate, formal, and material cooperation. Now, let's roll the clock forward 10 years. And imagine uh, this guy somehow, get, he gets away and he invests his money, uh, stolen money, in a chemist just down the road from you. And you happen to be a diabetic and you need insulin. Now, if it's, if it's the situation that there are two chemists in your village, one of which you know was bought uh, with the proceeds of crime, one of which was not, you would uh, be morally, uh, you have a moral duty to to buy your insulin from the chemist uh, which was uh, not not involved in crime in any way and if you did uh, buy your your insulin from this uh, this criminal uh, in that case you would be formally cooperating with that original act of of theft uh, you would be condoning and allowing him to li live from the proceeds of crime uh, however it would no longer be a proximate act of formal cooperation because we're far away from the original act now, both in, in terms of time and space. So in this case, you would call it a remote act of formal cooperation. Still wrong because all forms of formal cooperation, uh, all instances of formal cooperation with an evil act are morally unacceptable. Uh, but it's no longer proximate, it is remote because it's far away both in time and space from the, the original act of theft. However, if it was the, if it was, if it was the case that there were, he was the only chemist in your village and you, you really needed the insulin and you had no choice, uh, again, it would, be, uh, it would still be an act of cooperation with the original act, but you would no longer be intending uh, to, to condone or to support uh, that original act. So again, it would be a material cooperation if you were to buy your insulin from him. Uh, and in this case, it would be a remote material cooperation. Uh, and, and again, that's, that's, a, that's a very mild form of, uh, of cooperation. Uh, which is morally acceptable. Uh, you can, because again, there's a greater good at stake here, which is the preservation of your life. Uh, and you're not intending to support the original act or to condone the original act of theft. So that would be a remote, uh, an instance of remote material cooperation with the original act. And that's the situation in which, which is analogous to uh, a Catholic who is today uh, to, who takes a vaccine which was developed in some way from uh, cells, uh, cell lines from uh, developed from an aborted fetus. Uh, and, and this is what the original uh, state, Vatican statement, it was, for, it was from the Pontifical Academy for Life in 2005, said uh, anybody who takes a, a vaccine like this is engaging in very remote material cooperation uh, with the original act of abortion. Uh, and it says that it's a very mild form uh, of of, mar of cooperation and therefore it is morally acceptable uh, because again we're talking about life or death here we're talking about the preservation of life and 
uh, it's it's the the greater the the moral responsibility does not rest on on the final consumer or purchaser of the drug. The, the real moral responsibility goes it's much further back in that in that chain of events. Uh, so so there's no need to take all that moral responsibility upon yourself. Uh, if if your sort of entrance point into this chain of events a tra- chain of events is much further down the line down down the line, this is a very remote uh, material cooperation. In the original act, and uh, therefore uh, very mild and and permissible. So there you go. That that's the that's the type of moral cooperation. Yes, you are morally cooperating uh, in an evil act, but it is a very mild form of cooperation, and you are not culpable uh, for that. So uh, it's important not to be scrupulous and to recognise that we have uh, also have moral responsibility to protect our own lives and to protect the lives of others. So there you go. Um, I hope that is clear. Um, I think it's also worth saying just to, to mention some of the uh, scientific information that we have that are uh, that is available. That there is no, uh, in terms of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines that have that, that are now available, there is no biological material in the in those vaccines in what will be you know put into your body uh, that was actually derived in any way from uh, cells. Uh, of an aborted fetus, uh, the some some of these uh, cells were used in the testing of these vaccines, but they weren't constituent parts of the vaccine itself. That's 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 reassuring uh, to know, and uh, but it's important to uh, to keep an eye on this and to to check and to know. And there there are websites available where you can check. Okay, uh, was uh, what is the actual involvement of uh, of aborted, uh, you know, aborted uh, cells in the production of this vaccine, and just to know. Um, but it could be that it's uh, it's just part of the testing process. Secondly, we are the church always assumes uh, that the, these vaccines are both safe and effective, uh, and I, I imagine that uh, you know I, I personally I, tr- I trust uh, that the tests which are. Uh, the pharmaceutical companies uh, do to make sure that the, the 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 vaccines are safe and effective are trustworthy. So, but you know that that it's also an evolving situation because the virus is evolving. So it's important to keep informed on that and just to find out is is the vaccine still safe and effective? Uh, does it do what it says in the tin? Uh, and the church doesn't make a judgment on that, but it trusts that the pharmaceutical and scientific community. Uh, bear this responsibility and exercise the judgment correctly. Final thing I want to say is that uh, you know the, the Vatican has made it clear that it's, it's it remains a choice uh, whether you take this vaccine or not. Um, but we do have a responsibility as Catholics to do something to to protect ourselves and to protect others uh, again uh, against against the virus. Uh, so we have to do something. And the vaccine is one permissible way. If you don't take the vaccine, you still have a responsibility to protect yourself and to protect others and not to be a spreader. And that means making, I would say, quite, I imagine, quite drastic changes to your lifestyle, living a more isolated lifestyle. So just to say that you, we as Catholics, we do have a responsibility to the common good to stop the spread of this virus. And taking the vaccine is one permissible way of exercising that responsibility. If you choose not to exercise it in that way, you still have a responsibility to do something. Um, and so just to make that clear. Uh, there we go. Um, thanks very much for your attention. The, re- the reason uh, I-, I feel compelled uh, to to share this, to explain uh, this, this, this church teaching is because I think there are, there are a lot of uh, Catholic outlets out there, out there which are, are, not, um, are not explaining this well. Uh, either I don't perhaps even deliberately uh, there are, there are some people out there who who seem to be very intent on casting Pope Francis in a negative light and may, maybe are happy for 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 this teaching to go unexplained and to, for it to be misunderstood. Uh, it's very important for us to to understand uh, what the Pope is actually saying, and in this instance, he is very much in line. Uh, with what uh, previous popes have uh, said, he's very much in in line with the Catholic moral tradition, uh, and it is totally trustworthy. Um, 
I'll just finish by saying may God bless you and keep you safe and keep you well in this time of pandemic. Uh, don't be afraid and uh, do, do make a, a well-informed, conscientious decision. Uh, and please don't be swayed uh, by, I would say, either by any uh, sort of false or partial information. Uh, do inform yourself well, uh, and both in terms of scientific facts and in moral facts. This uh, little sharing has been an effort to shed some light on the moral facts of the case uh, and to explain the church's teaching on this matter. May God bless you and keep you.